um, let's continue in what I've got here. I'm just playing around a little bit with this and we'll try it ourselves. Look at this, I'm playing around with it by changing my title colors, my footer and my, and my, and my header up there. We'll see how we can do this in a moment. But this all comes from using the element inspector. So let's see about maybe changing the color of our, of our, of our, of our header and our footer down here. So I'm going to go back to uh, Firefox. And um, remember, you, if, if the element inspector ever goes away, you can always close it with the little developer tools. If it closes, if you close it, you can always bring it back with the right click. So let's say I'm trying to figure out what's happening up on top here. Uh, I recommend that you turn on then the pick element here. So remember, when you select it and you click on something, it then deactivates itself. You have to remember to turn it on every time you want to use it. It's on when it's blue, and when you've clicked on something, it turns off, so you have to turn it on again. So I want to figure out, well, tell me about the, the title up here. If I click, you have to remember also to click, and it highlights here, H1, uh, then the text. And there was this stuff that we never had to write, but there's actually already a built-in class of UI title. Okay, well, I clicked up here, I selected that. I see on the right side that we've got um, we've got uh, UI dot header space dot UI dash title comma UI footer space UI title. Okay, we're going to see this many times where there's a space. Remember I said never put a space. This is the reason why about not putting a space unless we know what we're doing. What this is saying is basically the nesting dolls. UI title inside of UI header. That's what the space is, basically. The thing on the right is on inside of the thing on the left. Comma, a whole different definition, right? Title inside of footer. So if there's a title, which our code shows here, on the left side that there is, right here, class UI title. If there's a title inside of a header, and we can tell that up over here, if we go back within the hierarchy, there's UI header, then control its font size and margins and all of that stuff. Comma, do the same thing to the footer. That's why we might have commas. Apply this to the header and the footer. That's what the comma is. And the space is basically what's on the right is inside of the left. And you can have more than one. You can have even one more here, space H1. But anyway, that's getting more complicated. But OK, so I'm trying to figure out, uh, how do I? F am I on the right track? Remember how I always say, well, I try to maybe change a background color or a text color. Uh, to some other color, yellow, blue, whatever, so I can perhaps figure out what I'm editing. And what I like about the Element Inspector is not only can we, or the developer tools, not only can we edit what exists, but we can add to it. So just so that we're looking at the same thing, hopefully you have uh, selected the title up on top. This is what I see. Hopefully you see the same. This is all that currently exists, and you can change any one of these. There's a check mark next to something to turn it off. Maybe I want to see what happens if I turn off font size. Hmm. Okay, so the default is big, because a, but by default an H1 is big. But here we then said make it a 1M size, so it gets a little bit more manageable. So this check mark turns things on and off. If I wanted to play, well, I've never heard of M's, but what happens if I click here and type 2M? That's pretty big. 3M, even bigger. 7M. So M's are a unit of measurement, sort of like percentages. You can kind of think about as 1M as kind of like 100%. 7M, like 700%. But technically, the size is based on the letter M of the current font. So an M, here's an M, um, is my base measurement, depending on the font, 
And if I do 7ms, it's like 7 letter m's sized. That's why the, this grows so fast when I choose higher numbers. But just think about it as percentage. Percents. So I can edit what exists, but I can also add uh, properties that don't, like this. If I click at the end, so there's all of these items. There's curly brace and curly brace. But if I click here before the end of the curly brace, it'll give me a new line right here. And they say, okay, what do we want to edit? And the great thing is that as we start to type C-O-L-O-R, it says all the possible CSS that might fit there. Color, color interpolation, color filters. So if you select it, and then you click on the right, then it's going to say all possible values of what we could edit. If we had selected um, text align, this would then show you what's possible as left, right, center, justified, and whatever else. You selected color, so here it's going to show you all 141 colors that are built in. For example, beige. And now I've got beige color up here actually also in the footer, which makes sense because that's what this says. Affect the header, comma, and the footer. So I'm figuring out that I could write some CSS to change the color of the title up there. Uh, what if I start to type background I have various things. I could do background attachment, background blend mode, background image, background color. What's that? Background color. So if you change background color, and then again, okay, uh, I'll, I'll type yellow. So I've got red text and yellow background color. Those didn't exist in that CSS rule. And notice this green, I guess, means we've added to it. This didn't exist before. And so I've got red with a yellow background, but not exactly as I envisioned. I wanted the yellow color to extend completely behind, all the way at the top of the title. it seems to almost extend all the way on the footer. So this is what I'm saying about CSS. It's a, it's a puzzle. It's all interrelated. Sometimes it is very straightforward. Sometimes it's not. Um, so in this case, I've got a background color, and I've targeted title. But here's an example where actually I have to go one level higher than what, seem, than, than what seems to be working. If I scroll down on the right side, this is on UI, this, look at how long this one is, UI bar A and UI page theme A plus UI bar inherit and HTML plus UI bar A plus UI bar inherit and HTML, etc. So this has got various um, selectors in one, all of those commas, and then very specific, a doll inside of a doll inside of a doll, when you've got the space. So this one inside of this one inside of this one, because there's spaces, and then a comma because it's a, it's a separate selector. So I'm going to see what happens if I add a brand new, so just click, you should get the empty space, a brand new background color. Here's the background color. 
that's where I actually ne needed to edit so that the whole top bar um, changes. And I see that on the footer too. There was a little bit that wasn't being affected because we've got something inside of something. So we went to the higher level, UI bar A. So let's say dot UI dash bar dash A. Let's add a new class down there. UI bar A. So we have either the option of inventing our own classes like we've done up here, div center, square image, then we have to apply them. In, in our case here, what I'm saying is let's change the, the default behavior. UI bar already exists. UI page theme A already exists. So I'm changing the default behavior. I'm overriding it with my more specific code. That's how we're going to break away from the default silver or black theme. So try that UI bar A and give it a background color. So here's how we've edited our background color for UI bar A. So now I've got a teal at the top and bottom because they both use UI bar A, but via the developer tools, it tells me that if I want to be more specific and only affect the title, I have to be specific like this. UI title, um, which is inside of header. Let's see what happens if I also add uh, a text color. I've got background color and I'll just say color for text and so that it's obvious I'll do yellow. All right, so if you change your um, 
your your title bar and footer bar background color, and then I changed my text color. It looks pretty good, but actually um, there's a slight little border around the text. Uh, it's very slight, but there's like a little white or beige or some sort of very light color around that text. It's more obvious depending on the color you choose. But I know uh, from looking at the developer tools and, uh, and doing this before, uh, jQuery Mobile 1.4 um, puts a little border around your text. I can see that here as I poke around as I poke around in my code there's a text shadow right here 0 1 0 and it's a very very light gray so 0 X and Y and then the one uh, no the uh, the first one is the X value left and right and then the the second one is the Y value up and down how much blur and then what color sort of like when we did the drop shadow so uh, I actually don't want that it makes my text look a little weird so we're gonna add one more property to what we're currently writing where we'll say text shadow none I, I kinda don't like having the text shadow because it doesn't uh, depending on your font it might not look very good but uh, I'll show you what we can do in a moment uh, so continuing to add here I'm gonna add text dash shadow whatever text shadow might currently exist I will say none I'm canceling out the text shadow if I do want to text shadow and I'll just put this as a comment because you may want it we can do text shadow and there's again an X offset a Y offset a blur and then a color so uh, if we do 2px 2px 1px and then a color black or just to be obvious red uh, that's gonna put a little shadow around your text I don't want a shadow so I've got none it cancels any shadow that might have existed Now, because we're working with HTML5 and CSS3, I'm going to show you something very cool. Here, we're just doing basic flat colors. Maybe I want a smooth gradient that blends from a dark blue to a light blue, or at an angle, or other, uh, other cool effects that I can do in Photoshop. So. Uh, if you go back to the web browser, there's this website, and I never remember the name, so here we'll have to search it. If we search um, Ultimate CSS Gradient, Ultimate CSS Gradient Generator. So let's go to let's go check this out. This has a bunch of built-in gradients and the code, so we just copy and paste, or we can build our own. So to get the perfect colors. Uh, so let's, um, I would do a Google search or else type the address colorzilla.com slash gradient dash editor. I, I never remember that, but I remember ultimate CSS gradient. So once you search ultimate CSS gradient, the result should be here. You get this screen. We've got some built-in gradients, like this brown one or this red one. So it starts off with a, with a preset. There's a preview of it. It goes vertically. That'll look nice on the top of my bar. Uh, you can change the direction. You can edit it here. Maybe it blends from here to here, but maybe actually I want it more like this and as I edit it here it previews it here and there's the code I need to copy all of that code and instead of my little simple background color equals whatever I just take that code and then I get the gradient technically 
I don't need all the code because this covers all the bases. Notice it says background with a plain color for old browsers. Well, eventually it's going to be an app, not in a web browser. Background for Mozilla-based web browsers. Background for WebKit-based web browsers like Chrome. Another variation of the WebKit gradient. If you're on the Opera web browser, here's their code. If you're on a Microsoft browser, here's their code. And then the official code, the W3C official code, would be that. So possibly you can probably get away with just that one line as more of the, as more of the browsers and, and uh, devices follow the standard. Technically, you would need that one. And then for even older versions, Internet Explorer 6 to 9, there's the final one there. So um, just to be safe, I'm going to copy it all. I'm going to select it all. I guess then you click Copy. Back to Codica, um, uh, back to Notepad. And here I've got a ba my background color, which was plain teal, and instead I'll delete that and paste what the ultimate CSS generator gave me. There we go. So now I'm not limited to the plain basic colors. I don't like that color, but that's the idea. Let me choose another one. So again, um, pick a preset gradient or maybe play with it. There's your code. I'm going to give it a try just to choose the official W3 standard. See if it still works. Probably not because we're testing it in Firefox and I don't know if our version follows the, the latest standard, but we'll see. This is the thing about try it, see what happens. Uh, I, seems like I have all the answers, but not always. So I'm going to only copy the W3 code. Looks like it. Yes. I do not recommend an image. That's going to increase your overhead, your graphic. Unless you've really optimized your image, um, this is this is a line of code, and it's like let's say um, you know a hundred bytes. That's still going to be a lot smaller than you know. Um, a, a, a five kilobyte um, simple simple graphic so I would recommend instead to use uh, to define your colors via code it's more efficient it takes up less uh, hard drive space less app space it's um, my recommendation So for my test here, it looks like you you might not need all of this code. You might just need the little section that is marked with W3C. That's the official standard. Let me give you uh, a minute 
or so, play with some different gradients there, then we'll look at editing other aspects of the, of the design. So it's just dark blue and it doesn't blend? I see that it does. If we go back to the example, I do. It's really subtle, but the first thing you do is press windows and then plus key to zoom in. Because I can kind of see that it does. sort of the same sort of way that at the top it slightly different than the Now I mentioned this on the um, on the first week when we were playing with colors a bit. Remember the concept of background and foreground. So I've got I've gone to the route of having an interesting background, which is a gradient. Uh, but I still have to deal with foreground elements, which in my case here is this text. Because it's a gradient and it blends from one color to another, then you have a little bit more difficulty here because you might have a light color to a dark color, so you've got both. You've got a background that is both at the same time light and dark, and then you're, you're going to have a foreground that, that you have to deal with. It was easier before where we had either just a dark background, so we put some light foreground, or just a light background and put some dark foreground. Here, mine blends, so you're going to have a, perhaps a little harder time to choose some text that doesn't clash with your gradient. So for the moment, I think I'll keep this yellow color. And uh, so just uh, a little bit more time to put your color. Then we'll look at editing other aspects. I want to change the background color of my whole app. We'll do that in a moment.
Okay, let's say I want to figure out to change my the background color of my app. Notice these other pages change. They all get the same gradients. Uh, but I want to maybe change the background of my app itself. I have to be careful here because there's a lot of things that are going to be on top of it. Text, specifically. So then you're going to most likely not do a gradient here or a very subtle gradient or else your text might be lost. But we need to figure out what will we edit. So again, I need to right-click and select Element Inspector if you're, if you're not there anymore. And uh, this time most likely go back further Let's see. Probably this time go further. On whole page or, or just one element? I started on one element and then I'm going to try to go back through the hierarchy here to see if I see anything that uh, affects the background. Sometimes it's uh, trial and error. Oh, there it is, okay. So again, I, I make it look easy because I've had practice, but it's going to be about uh, using the element inspector, starting at a starting point, and if I don't see anything that makes sense here, like the background color, then I went back. I went to UI content, I didn't see anything background color, so then I went back one more level, and it was UI page theme A. So that's where I, that's what it seems to be here. UI page dash theme A. And so we could do what was mentioned earlier about copy and paste. If I don't want to type this wrong, I should be able to select it here and control C to copy and then paste in notepad so that I don't mistype it. And so far, what we've been writing, we've just been adding it to the end of the document. But actually, we should stop here and think uh, CSS, the cascade, top to bottom. Um, we should now also start to think about things inside of things. Uh, the, um, where I've got you a page theme A that was affecting the, um, the welcome message. And then we had the UI bar, which is affecting the top. And now I'm about to affect something called U, uh, UI page theme A. Everything is on top of the theme A right there. So actually, I should define what theme A looks like before these other elements. Because this is where we could have this conflict of what takes precedence. And basically, it's from top to bottom. So if I define my theme much later here, after a certain part, it might conflict. So I'm going to define this before these other parts. Oh, that's true, isn't it? So the same one affects different things. Yeah, didn't notice it, but that's true. The same one affects different things, so we, we don't need another one. We'll just repurpose the one that's already there. So we already had a UI page theme A. OK, so we'll just add a background color. Mine is on line 20. And we could add a gradient just like this ultimate CSS generator gives us. We could, this is a solid background color. We could put the background color with this uh, in this method as well. <coughs> So 
at least it works. Terrible color, but at least it works. Right, so um, you can uh, take a moment to change that. Uh, let's take one last break, uh, 10 minutes. And when we come back, we'll continue to style our document. We started with a very basic one today, and then we need, we've need we edited more to look interesting. It's about 8.15-ish, so we'll be back at 8.25.